Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. Welcome back to Byzantium here in EU4, where we're making Rome great again. But at the moment, we have a rebel problem. Our overextension is at 176. Not only do we have a rebel problem, but we're also having a disaster coming up on, on us pretty soon here. Progress is at 46%. It's increasing at two per month. So expect to have a disaster in about two and a half years. Fun times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Separatist sentiment. Whatever. We're killing rebels today. And it's not really the end of the world. But it is annoying. You kill rebels now. Are you guys going to move? I need this 120 stack to move. I don't want to engage him... Uh, on bad terms. I want to engage him on my terms. More rebels! Rebels! What is this general's name? Okay, that's my heir. Could put him in that army? Sure. Anything that's about to engage in combat should have a general. We'll try to do that. Battle in Sevilla, very good. Battle in Co, very good. I'm just gotta take these armies out one at a time, that's all. To Lisbon. Are you moving yet? They're not moving. Oh, no. I need to kill you. I can't kill you if you don't move. Well, I could, but I probably want a little bit of a reinforcement for that. I guess I could bring over some reinforcements. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. I'll bring over another 40k or whatever. Hey, Levantine Rebels. Nice. Anyway, welcome back, everyone, to this wonderful shit show we call Byzantium. Rebels in Theodoro, really? Yeah, okay, particularists. Interesting. Now, as we get some cores to finish, which I believe the first one finishes in oh, about eight months... Um, then our overextension will come down, the revolt risk will also come down, etc., etc. It's just going to take a while, that's all. Hey, they're moving! Good, you're good, good. They're going separate directions, too. Fantastic. Rebels, 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 no one cares. We're taking a massive amount of attrition here, uh, but that's all right. Come on. There you go. Get him out of there. And at this point, it's nice to not have forts all over the place because the rebels probably would be sieging forts right now and they would have been successful with a few of them anyway. And then we would have to siege them back and that would just be annoying as fuck. But since we don't have forts everywhere, like how many forts do we own? Uh, we have one fort and it's in the capital. So since we don't have forts everywhere, we don't have to worry about that shit, which is really nice. All right, this general is called Pangiotis Pacellos. 
So I'll put him in an army that's about to attack stuff. I'll put you up here. There you go. You kill them and them, and then we'll unsiege it. But yeah, walking to Egypt is taking a while. Rebels! Gascon! Not Gascon! Oh no! Alright, where are we sailing? We're going to Theodoro? Uh, no, the Commonwealth can take care of that. Let's go over here. Let's go handle Egypt, because that's getting out of control. This, I think, is under control now. I think. I would like to swap in a general if we could. But I think it's going all right. Lisbon has fallen. Good. Uh, let's put you up here. You can take out that rebel stack. You guys can take out this rebel stack. Don't need a general for that. And we'll continue to move you to Zurich. Okay. You guys can split up. You guys can also split up. Ah, we have a general available. Perfect. And there we go. First battle in the Levantine. Good, good. And the Levant. Whatever. Make it happen. I mean, we have it under control. It's just a pain in the ass. That's all. How much AE did we get? 176. It's not that much. But it adds up. The Egyptian guys, the Mamlukian rebels, have been out the longest. So they're the ones I need to get rid of the first. Even just killing the army should be enough to um, lower their chance to succeed by a lot. Okay, burn is a success. It's the only really, the only battle I was really worried about was burn, and it's a success. So we're good to go. You can split up. All right, I think we're golden. Yeah, the list of rebels is pretty huge. We're just gonna keep getting rebels. We're fine. Oh, shit, more rebels spawned in Damascus? Oh, no, they snuck around behind me. I went down to engage them, and they went the opposite way. They went behind me. Salamanca! All right, not a problem. I'll deal with these guys, and then we'll go to Salamanca. And then we'll split up. Ooh, we can tech up five years early. But I don't think that is a smart move at all. I think we should do mill development, really. Unless we want to take a military idea group. No, I don't think we need quantity. I don't want aristocratic. What should our last idea group even be? Espionage, maybe? Maybe we can go spy on people? Nah. Could go humanist. Just to lower national revolt risk a little bit. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, really. I can see that working out for us. Alright, you do that. You go there and kill them. And you can take out these guys. That looks good. You're taking attrition. Moved. Move. Move. Shouldn't be taking attrition in my own lands. Not with a stack of 50. Seems a little goofy. All right. Uh, Panagios. You can go into a new army.
There you go. Maritime? Oh, goodness. Why would you want Maritime? It's just so garbage. Maritime! Maritime! Description says... when. F oh, where's the description of Maritime? There's no description. Well, anyway, it gives you Navy tradition, light ship combat, global ship repair, naval force limits, ship cost, naval leader maneuver, blockade efficiency... And your ships repair in coastal zones instead of when they're docked. whoop de fucking do Not that navies are ever useful. Well, I take that back. They are useful, but they're never important. They're always like a secondary concern, right? Religious rebels? Oh, come on. We've got the rebels under control now. You can wander over here. We'll group up and take them out. What's this general? That's my heir. Okay. Well, we can swap our heir into one of these armies down here. Probably this big stack. Yeah, because they're going to be attacking into the mountains. They need that bonus. You guys can split and keep sieging. Good job. Good job. Yeah, this is just thrilling entertainment, right? Just non-stop Rebels. Imagine what it's like to play it. Yeah, Rebel Simulator 2016. It doesn't get more real than this. But I mean, that's that's kind of the, the game's way of persuading you to not go over the overextension limit. I mean, the only real downside is... Rebels. That's really the only downside to going over the limit. And if you're okay with Rebels, then it's fine. I mean, who cares? But Rebels are a pain in the ass. Okay, first couple cores are coming in pretty soon. And the rebels are dealt with, it looks like. Yep. This is what you get for going over 100% OE while having negative 2 stab. Well, the negative 2 stab is not a big deal, really. That's only 4 revolt risk. Most of this is from overextension. Yeah, 8.8 .8 revolt risk from overextension. The negative stability is nothing. It's just 4. Ooh, a great synod. Free stability. Thank you, game. Gotta love that free stability. Okay, no one's taking attrition up there, but you guys can split out, and you should split up, I mean. Uh, and I do have a general available, but it looks like we don't need it because we've killed all the fucking rebels except this stack. There we go. Uh, give me him. Get in there and fight Maggot. Annexation is still going as planned. It's not really an issue. 
Being overextended does slow it down, but it's not the end of the world. Still going to finish before the game's over. And we have a bunch of cores that are coming up soon. Good. Do you prefer if Rebels would be like CK2 where they would be independent? No, no, no. I don't think Rebels should be like CK2. Obviously, the games should represent Rebels differently because, um, well, different time periods had different you know, capabilities for Rebels. A lot of it has to do with how well they could organize, right? If they don't have the information to pass on quickly, like modern day, you have telephones and, and internet and stuff like that. If you don't have that, then it kind of makes sense that it's harder for Rebels to organize. So, for instance, Victoria 2, you had better communication, so the Rebels are... Uh, they spawn all at once. They spawn all together, because they can do that. They can talk to each other, they can organize. There's newspapers and a whole bunch of shit is different as, as the game progresses, or as history progresses. So I think I think I like having differences in each game's Rebels. That being said, uh, because because the rebels all spawn at once in Victoria 2, they're really a pain in the ass. I mean, you gotta you gotta be balls to the wall, taking care of them. You gotta be on the ball, not balls to the wall. You have to be on the ball, or else you're gonna fuck up with Vicky 2's rebels because they're they're really unforgiving. And I think that's great. I think that the having them be difficult is nice. Uh, but rebels in CK2 and EU4 are not quite as tough, and I think that's mainly just to you know the lack of ability to organize. They just didn't have that kind of technology. That and a lot of things like, you know, freedom. A lot of stuff like that. The idea that um, the people can organize whenever they want to, for whatever reason they want to, that sort of thing developed in Victoria 2 a lot. And it didn't really exist before then. Also, are you not going to take care of this for me? Let's just use a Merc. Yeah, freedom of the press, freedom to meet up. Shit. Things like that didn't really exist in EU4 or CK2's time periods. Rastafari, thanks for resubscribing. Put some love in chat for Rastafari. All right, so the rebels are dealt with for the most part. Cores are still rolling in. Uh, free Diplomat. I'm supposed to be fabricating on France. I keep forgetting. And we need to go to war with Great Britain very soon here. So we should we should be ferrying troops up to Great Britain. Let's do that right now. To Great Britain. Let's bring uh, these four guys up. I don't need that many armies. What am I kidding? But I might as well spread out a bit. Let's put two guys up there. Two guys over here. Hey, I haven't heard that in a while. Wah, 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 wah. Cores are coming in. All right, let's spread across Africa. Put you guys over here. Let's keep 40k right here. And let's keep 40k right here in Cairo. Just in case rebels spawn again, because they probably will. Okay, what is this? Land theft. I need to side with the burgers if I can. Oh, there is no burger option. Okay. Um, I'm going to side with nobody here. Because I want them both to lose influence. And they did. Which is great. Let's make them loyal again, though. Eh, no, it's fine. I don't really care about the nobles being loyal. Do I have a uh, general available? Sure do. Go kick some ass.
Oh, there's rebels in Britain. Lol. I don't know why I didn't expect that. Hello. We're down to 138, but we are about to get a disaster for internal conflicts. That'll be fun. It's like plus five national revolt risk. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Do you think rebel army sizes are too big? Um, I think that really depends on what you're considering to be too big. If you're a one province miner and you get a revolt that's like 14 troops, what the fuck are you going to do about it? You know, if you can only field an army of like eight soldiers, why are you getting 14 rebels? You know, stuff like that doesn't make any sense. But if you're a big nation, you should be able to handle big rebels. I don't see a problem if you're a big nation. Like, we're fucking huge. We have 6,700 development. We should be able to handle, you know, lots of rebels. And we do. I do think rebels... Uh, there should be some kind of penalty for getting rebels. Like, if you're going to be overextended like we are. I mean, that's good for your nation. Being overextended is great. It means you're expanding. But there should be some kind of penalty for getting rebels. Because right now, rebels, the only the only penalty is like we spent about 300,000 manpower killing rebels. That's it. All we spent is manpower. Nothing else. What I think should happen is when rebels spawn, that province that they spawn from should lose development. It should. Because you are literally killing people who live there. And if you kill people who live there, it's not going to be able to produce like it was in the past. So production should go down. And it's not going to be able to be taxed like it was in the past. So taxes should go down. And it sure as fuck should not be able to give you manpower for a little while. Like, it should just have a 10 years of no manpower from that province because they just spawned rebels that died. I really feel like provinces should take penalties for spawning rebels. To me, that would make sense. Yeah, Hesse's annexation is down by five years now simply for coring a few provinces. Am I looking forward to Stellaris? Hell yeah, I am. I'm not someone who jumps on hype trains, but I do like uh, space 4X games. Like, I love Endless Space. One of my favorite games ever. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Stellaris. Claims on Britain are going to disappear in two years, so we should get to war. Like, I can't just sit around all day. What are we at? 134. 128. I wonder how bad the internal conflicts are going to be. I don't even remember what that does. All right, let me read in on this because it's going to happen. Stability costs 50% more. Goods produced goes down. Is that it? Just stability costs more and goods? It doesn't have like national revolt risk. Fuck, I don't even care about that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, it's going to suck, but it doesn't matter, really. Am I looking forward to Hearts of Iron 4? Eh, a little bit. Again, I'm not a hype person, and I didn't really play Hearts of Iron 3 because I thought it was confusing as balls. So it's hard for me to get excited for Hearts of Iron 4 when I never really played Hearts of Iron 3. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Also, why is my air not dying? Holy shit. Uh, Adro Kanaikos just won't die. He's been a general for eight years now. He just needs to kick the bucket. You know what I'll do? I'll put him in here for the Siege of London. You can siege London, okay? That's going to be your job. He's like, oh yeah, I love Siege in London. Oh, speaking of sieging London, I'm going to have to ferry up some of those 30 stacks. Where's my um, 
30 cannon stacks. There's one. Come on up. We just need something like that to plow through these giant forts. Because uh, the forts up here are freaking huge. What are the forts? Forts, please. We have a level 8, a level 8, a level 6, a level 1, and a level 8. So he's got three level 8s, a level 6. I mean, that's that's nothing to shake a stick at. Are we out of time? Alright, well, we're out of time. Ah, balls, balls, balls. Balls, 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 balls. 120 overextension. We're getting there. Seven months until we get internal conflicts. <laughs> Hamburgian separatists, they're at 0 0.2. You can do it, Hamburgian separatists. Ming and Muscovy are back at war. Oh yeah, Muscovy, did you did you wind up having a baby? Yeah, he had a baby. All right. Let's go pick up that 30k stack. I think that supply limit plus 50 could be good. I'm considering just teching up early. I really don't think another military idea group is going to be any good. Maybe aristocratic? Hmm. All right, fine. I'll just take it. I mean, there's just there's nothing else we can really do before the end of the game, so I might as well just take it. Because Diplo points are tied up annexing vassals. Admin points are tied up coring everything. So yeah, I might as well just take it. Next tech, though. <laughs> Next tech, of course. Gross. On the boat. How's our exhaustion, by the way? We're at zero exhaustion, so starting a new war would probably be fine. Yeah, internal conflicts just doesn't look that scary at all. 50% stability cost and 33% goods produced. I assume it drops us to negative three stab, so I should declare on England before this triggers, just in case it drops us to negative three stab. Because if you go to negative three stab, you can't declare war anymore. 114. Still overextended. Still overextended, of course. Wow, Commonwealth's liberty desire is down to 14%. Holy shit. He just does not want to be independent. At all. All right, let's declare war. 109. So we'll go under 100 when this finishes, which is next year, April. Okay. Anyway, Great Britain, you've had it too good for too long, my friend. It is time to die. But this will have to wait until next time. So thank you so much for watching. I have been Shen. You have been you. Come back next time for more adventures in the lands of EU4 Byzantium. Have a good day.